three days ago, one of the students shared with me how much they valued the feedback that they've been getting on their writing. Good. Good. All right. At that time, I was also assessing some of their work based on chapters one through four in Hatchet and how this divorce is affecting the protagonist, Brian Robeson, in this book. And I had just gotten done doing a lot of grading and a lot of thinking, and I thought, gosh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of writing that I'm doing. This is taking a lot of time, and I, but I know how much the children value this. And that's when I said, you know what? I want them to practice this too. We are going to continue our discussion on how we respond to each other's thinking and writing. I want you to be practicing on how to look at your peers' work. I'm going to ask, actually, Lane, if we can look at Lane's writing piece together and do like a little fishbowl. Sometimes when we do our writing, sometimes we get a little nervous about sharing our work and having somebody else see it, right? Because it can be scary. I mean, I know when I make my work public, or you know, just when I brought it in to to my workshop, and and the person was like, "Yeah, you just wrote way too much." You know, it kind of makes you go, "Whoa, I worked so hard," and yeah. she doesn't like it, and your feelings can get hurt. We're learning how to put our work out there in a meaningful way, but also how to give comments that are meaningful instead of "Good job, way to go." Specifically, how do we respond? today with our writing pieces. And in order to do that, I thought what we would do is look back at the writing prompt and we would use the protocol called the ladder of feedback to look at Lane's piece of writing and then look at some of your peers and we're gonna do some partner shares. If this is the writing prompt, we were supposed to describe how the divorce is affecting Brian. Use three examples from the text to support Brian's emotions. So with the ladder of feedback, Lane and I are going to kind of talk it out. While I'm talking, you'll see me using either a red or orange pencil, and I'm going to use that um, when I'm talking to Lane about any clarifying questions that I might have. And I'm also going to use a blue or a green pencil, whichever one I have, with what I value um, about Lane's piece. And then also um, maybe point out some things that I was wondering. Boys and girls, I'm going to have you read it quietly, too, to yourself. I want to see what they will do and if they will be as caring about their peers' work. They love receiving it from me and so I wonder if we start practicing it so that they can give this type of feedback in writing um, and careful looking, looking closely at the student work, um, if that's going to allow them to slow down and be more analytical and engaging and also to develop deeper relationships with their classmates. OK, boys and girls, once you've read it once, now I want you to go back a second time. And I want you to just make some notes um, where you might have a clarifying question and where you're going to um, write that or underline. You can underline in red or orange, and then a green or a blue where you value. Ready for this? Yes. Good. All right. So. Lane, I have a qu uh, clarifying question for you. Can you clarify why you chose the word misery to show how he's being affected? Um, first of all, I chose misery because it's a GWC, good word choice, um, instead of saying sad or depressed. Um, so, and he's, um, he's, yeah, miserable. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to move on to what I've really valued about this. Um, I value your, your use of um, quotes um, and going back to the text to support some of your thinking. I specifically liked up here um, near the beginning your quote, look, can't we talk this over? Can't we talk this out? Can't you tell me what's bothering you? Um, and I liked it because it wasn't necessarily Brian speaking, it was his mother speaking, which kind of made me think, she's trying to work it out. She's trying to talk. I wonder if you could keep going back to misery to kind of push that a little bit, to keep going back to what the writing prompt was asking you. How is it affecting him? Um, I read a lot in here that it is affecting him, but maybe as a reader, I think I wonder if it would be stronger 
if I knew specifically how it was affecting him. Um, and then lastly, I really valued what you said about um, how these words, um, the, these emotions kind of keep haunting him almost. And I thought, oh, that could be like an interesting word too, especially since he keeps replaying it. It's almost like, you know when you have, and maybe I'm dating myself right now, but um, when, you, when you put a movie in, a DVD in, and um, you keep hitting rewind and play, rewind and play, rewind and play. He's not hitting stop, eject. He keeps hitting rewind and play, rewind and play. And maybe somehow in your writing, you could kind of work it in that it's, it's taking over. Boys and girls, um, I want to have you join us. Is there anything else that you noticed? Um, anything else that we can help um, Lane? Tell him. I have a clarifying question because when you said the secret that Brian won't tell anybody, especially his mother, um, I didn't understand when you said that because you didn't really back it up. Well, let's think of, can we use our words here? I, I wonder if you could have. I wonder if you could have backed it up. With what? With in information from the text. Can you give a suggestion? What, because I didn't understand when it said especially his mother because I don't remember it saying especially his mother. So maybe text. just a little bit more plot right there as far as why is this is involving the mother right now. Is that what yeah. you're wondering about? Okay. All right. Thanks, Callum. I valued that you thought it was affecting his memory because I didn't really think about that. I was just thinking about his like emotions and that sort of thing. I value how you took like sentences from the text and you actually said, um, I know this because the book said it. It just, it shows that you actually went back and took your time to find that and I really admire that you did that. Thank you for sharing that, Cece. Go ahead, Graham. I'll start with the suggestion. Okay. Lane, you used a lot of transition words, but you used a lot of the same ones like is and of. So that's one thing you might want to go to at the source. The ladder of feedback protocol has been really valuable in our classroom. No pun intended with the word valuable. What did you think about using the ladder protocol, clarifying questions, values, concerns, and suggestions? How did you feel about somebody looking at your work like we're doing right now and, and using this protocol? It actually makes me feel pretty good about my writing mm -hmm. um, and all the comments and suggestions and values that mm -hmm. um, you've been giving me. It helps. It's going through my brain right now um, and I'm saying, okay, I can put this into my writing piece next time mm -hmm. and how could I change this? So now, how would it, do you think it would feel if all of a sudden I wrote on your paper, good. Well, if you had just written good on my paper, I wouldn't really be able to improve because like, like on the spelling, you would write like ways for me to improve my sentences. And if you just wrote like good sentence, I wouldn't really be able to improve on what I needed to work on. And I would just think there's something wrong with this, but I don't know how to fix it. Um, quick story. So my English teacher, and she was my English teacher in, in high school, um, she gave a lot of feedback. Um, and this was the time too when we didn't we weren't using computers. We had to write things by hand. And we would write our papers and hand it in and she would only give us a P or an F. Pass or fail. All right? Now, we always knew the very first one coming back was always going to have the F on it. Everybody did. But you were rocking the show, boys and girls, if you could based on all of her suggestions the third to fifth time around, get a P for pass. But for some reason, her comments and the way she wrote to us and the time that she took to reflect on each person's writing, we wanted to do better. We wanted to improve our writing. And I will never forget that day, boys and girls, that after my third try, I got that P. Oh my gosh, and I did the rock and dance, and I was so incredibly excited. Um, and I remember it was also because of that teacher that I wanted to study um, English literature and writing in college. All right, and I still remember how valuable her comments were. And she wasn't just somebody that would be putting the grade or the mark on there. 
So what I'd like us to do, all right, is give Lane, all right, just rip off the top one, put the rest in your um, language arts, the rest of this, because you'll use this. I would like you to team up with your table partner and get into a cozy area in the classroom and try to practice this with, um, with a partner. I think today it gave them a little sense of what it looks like to be looking at student work and how using a thinking routine like this can help me to stay on focus and give some constructive feedback for them to work with that's um, not threatening. They're looking for different ways to say things in a meaningful way and ultimately, to be honest with you, I think they want adults to take their thinking seriously. That's what they're working towards. They want to be heard. They want to feel like they matter. And I think that that's a pretty good thing to want.